Well, certainly appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. And uh, we want to make this as uh, effective and uh, appreciate your your carving out uh, time from your busy day to be this uh, be with us today. We want to make sure we we honor that uh, that time. So um, so with that, maybe we'll kind of get launched here, and we may have folks joining us as the uh, as the session goes on. Um, the main thing we want to accomplish today is to really uh, be able to two things, I guess, just to share as much information about the the program as we can with you, and the second is to address or answer any questions you might have. Uh, as you're considering whether this is the right program for you. And so um, you can do this one of two ways. Uh, you can um, post over into the chat box, which is a, a, a good way. Then your question gets exposed to everyone, and, and either Karen or I or Tony can be watching it. And then uh, the second way is at the end of the session, you'll see where we have a, um, and my email, uh, um, and, and you can certainly get questions. I, I've been answering questions for about a month now from potential participants. So feel free, if you don't feel comfortable in the larger room, feel free to do that. So why don't we launch into it then. And, um, and again, I'll say thank you for joining us. Um, IELOL 2017 will be the ninth year of the program. And um, uh, I don't know if this has been, how broadly this has been shared, but this will be Penn State's last year of um, cooperation with, uh, no, actually, we always cooperate with OLC, uh, Karen, we love OLC, but the last year of us uh, co-sponsoring the program. And so uh, it, it, that that's a, you know, has a has a, uh, a downside to it, which is, for me anyways, has been just, this has been a tremendous program to work on, and I've met such great colleagues, and so it's with some sadness that we'll be uh, we'll be signing off for that. But I know LC is already working on next plans for upcoming events, and uh, they, as always, they will do a great job. So uh, great to have you with us. And um, what I want to do today is just introduce our speakers. We almost lined up exactly. Uh, we got to switch Tony and uh, and Karen there on the videos, but. Uh, so my name's Larry Reagan. I'm from Penn State University, and I'm with the Center for Online Innovation and Learning. Uh, we are connected to the World Campus, and we're also connected to the EdTech Network here at Penn State. Um, Tony, let's go to you next. Can you say hello and introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm Tony Farrell, uh, Executive Dean for the College of Education at Ashford University. And I'm going to apologize for the, uh, the streak of light that is going through my face. I am messing around with my blind. It's not cooperating. So you see my <laughs> head bobbing and weaving. It's to try to get out of the sun. but. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here today. And Tony, if I could just ask you, um, what year did you participate in the program? 15? 15, yeah. 15. Okay. It was, uh, in fact, uh, I, have my, uh, I have my certificate of completion uh, uh, <laughs> right, right here next to me. So. Terrific. And you are, you are a great participant. I always enjoyed uh, interacting with you and so glad you could take the time to be with us this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So Karen, tell us about uh, where you are and and um, your your participation in our program. Good morning. My name is Karen Peterson, and I currently serve as the Chief Knowledge Officer for the Online Learning Consortium. I've been with OLC for two years, and prior to that, um, I had worked my entire career in higher education, um, starting out as a faculty member and then moving into various administrative roles in distance and online education um, at three different institutions. So uh, the last two years, I have served as a faculty member for ILOL. Uh, my first year, um, I was a faculty member in training, uh, and last year, uh, I was able to uh, move into that faculty role and really enjoy the opportunity. So I look forward to uh, serving as a faculty member again this year. Terrific. Thanks, Karen. And um, I have to tell you, uh, for Karen, it was a bit of uh, baptism by fire. I think that the first year we she sort of jumped into it uh, full force, and then last year, and it's a it's a, a learning experience for all of us. And it, it, Karen just did such a great job, and it's such a pleasure to work with her and the OLC team. So, thank you, Karen, for joining us as well. 
Um, one of the things that, uh, just to get the language around this program, uh, we call it the Institute for Emerging Leadership in Online Learning. And we've actually played around with that language a little bit. There was one year, I'm going to guess it was 2014, maybe, Tony, even 2015, where we changed it to the Institute for Engaged Leadership in Online Learning. And um, so, so we've wrestled with which is the best term, and, and we went back to using the word emerging um, because of uh, the, the felt need that we needed to address and help advance uh, individuals within their institutions who are perhaps new to leadership and are interested in, in stepping into um, more, more engaged leadership roles, but also um, existing leaders who are becoming sort of acclimated and oriented to the online learning space. So in our program, we get a fairly uh, diverse group of individuals, but we stayed with the, uh, we went back, I should say, to the original title of the program, and, and we do joke a little bit. Believe me, I've heard all of the jokes about the letters of I-E-L-O-L. -L. Um, we will, um, hello, Paul, good to see you coming online, a colleague of ours from Ireland. Um, so I-E-L-O-L has to sort of roll off of your tongue by the time you're done the program. One easy way that people have told me that they remember it is they do Internet Explorer laugh out loud. And that gives them the, the letters. But, but it, uh, it stands for the Institute for Emerging Leadership and Online Learning. So, so let, me, let me just uh, take a couple minutes and talk about maybe the, um, and Tony, in a second, I'm going to come back to you maybe and just get your reflections on these outcomes as well. But just talk through quickly what the program is designed to do, if you will. And um, I will say at the start, it program over the years has morphed. The very first offering, which was 2009, and, and this existing program in 2017 will be very different programs based on a couple of different uh, variables. But Having said that, we've always had a personal leadership dimension of the program, and uh, the orientation there is to really get individuals thinking about what leadership means, what their call to leadership means. Um, uh, if there's not already been some thought about, is this for me? One of the outcomes we, we have had at the program is, is after folks have gone through it, they uh, they reflect back and say, well, maybe this wasn't, you know, a leadership path wasn't quite exactly what I was thinking about. The other thing that we try to do is to really help individuals get a, um, a larger perspective about their own institution, both internally, and that is uh, organizationally, um, structurally, mission, and so forth, digging in a little bit and getting a, a much better grasp of um, your institution, and in particular, the framing toward digital learning slash online learning. And I'm now mixing those two terms a bit more because we understand, in particular, as we have international guests, the term online learning is not necessarily a globally embraced term. There are other terms that are used, but digital learning is, is kind of a... Um, a widely accepted one. Uh, the next thing we, we concentrate on is really thinking about, as a leader, how do you respond uh, to online digital learning at your institution? What is your responsibility? What is your engagement? Uh, what are your opportunities? And how can we help you advance that uh, so that you are making an impact not only at your institution, and, and I, I should say primarily towards serving your students, because that's a lot about what we talk about here. We also concentrate on that global online learning perspective. And let me reflect back up to number two. I talk about creating the organizational institutional awareness. Uh, and a really important part of online learning is, is this dimension of uh, the global aspect. Um, uh, you know, For those of you who know a little bit about Penn State, you might know that we're geographically isolated, if you will, in the center part of our state. Um, and, and so it's important for us to be thinking globally. We, we're, we're always exploring no, both nationally and internationally what is going on. Where do we fit? Where does our program fit into the larger perspective? And understanding what our leadership response is in that, uh, considering that, that framework. Uh, lastly, then, I think there's this idea of, of really creating this cadre of, of uh, leaders, of connecting people from 
very disparate, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, the kinds of individuals we get into the program, but, but building that network of engaged learners where you have some trust level, uh, talking to people who are kind of at your same, uh, who, who have the same charge within their institutions and how they're advancing uh, that and in, in advancing their careers and so forth in that network piece. So I'm going, to, I'm going to ask Tony here maybe to reflect on that because he's gone through this and, and see what right. his takeaways were from the program. Does this resonate with you, Tony? It does. And, you know, uh, Ashford University is a, uh, an institution that at, at this point is 100% online. So we have a fairly large footprint in the digital learning community. Um, all of the outcomes from your perspective? I think so, Larry, and I guess I would just really go to that bottom outcome um, that it's an amazing network of emerging leaders. And I and I would I would focus there simply because um, uh, this community becomes very tight knit uh, and it's not just those individuals that are participating in the program in a particular year, but the alumni of ILOL really connect with one another. And I think that's where um, it's really valuable. I was at a conference last week and I was talking with an alum who was going through um, some transitions at their institution. Um, and I said, you know, don't forget about the ILOL network um, mm -hmm. as you transition and seek insights and perspectives from others. So I think that's the other thing that I find incredibly valuable is that those connections can really transcend the years. Um, as your career changes, you can seek advice and counsel, insights and perspectives from those alumni uh, members for, for years to come. Thanks, thanks, Karen, because you, you reminded me. Hey, Tony, nice to have you back. Um, you reminded me of that, uh, that alumni piece uh, around the network. And I was just asked this morning, how many alums have we had? Uh, to date, we've had 327. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, later on about where they come from. But it's a, it's a very nice, which is, which is one of the most rewarding pieces for me. It's been a very nice, diverse group of institutions. So, uh, you know, having, having that range of, of perspectives is so uh, critical, I think, in helping all of us understand what this landscape looks like. And it's, uh, I think it's a bit of a safe place, Tony, I don't know if you feel that as well, but it's a safe place to have conversations about issues and challenges you're dealing with. Uh, I do, Larry. Uh, I think one of the things that a uh, big takeaway for me is is connecting with institutions and leaders from a variety of um, modalities, whether it's uh, our institutions, public, private, uh, for profit, um, obviously brick and mortar uh, type of uh, institutions, and seeing that we, in in many cases, have very similar uh, issues that we have to deal with, and looking at solutions, brainstorming, and developing a a network of like leaders from from institutions that we can bounce things off of and say, hey, what have you thought about this? And the the network that you develop at the institute it it moves past you know uh, your time at OLC. You'll connect with with I call them friends, uh, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, what have you, at other conferences. Uh, it's a very diverse network and. You know, quite honestly, uh, I, I lean on many of the people that I have met at IELOL uh, in my current role. Mm, thank you. It, you know, uh, Tony, that reminds me at, um, at the OLC conference, the one in particular in the fall, and uh, as they are doing, say, for example, the awards program at the end, and they put up, you know, best presentation, best paper, and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm always tickled by looking up there, and now I recognize a lot of these names, and I look up and say, oh, there's an IELOLer, and right. there's two. And then I begin to see them working together, so a conference presentation or a publication. And Karen, I think that that speaks again to that idea of that, of that larger network and, and getting you out of 
sort of the, the box you might be in at your home institution thinking larger. So terrific. Let's, let's jump in a little bit more detail here. And then I'm going to hand it over to Karen in a bit and have her walk through things. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier the idea of sort of a target audience. And um, we're, we're really looking for people who are both emerging leaders, and I, I should probably have in there, and engaged leaders, people who are already uh, in leadership roles. Tony's a great example already. He came into the program already pretty well positioned in his organization to contribute at a leadership level, and we start there. And, and someone like Tony is able to maybe help uh, another colleague who's considering, you know, applying for a director position or something. Um, and, and then the idea that uh, engaged leaders may be looking for a better understanding of their digital learning framework, call it online learning framework. So that's the, that's sort of the target audience. Uh, we've had, matter of fact, last year we had a provost from an institution who joined us for that very reason. Obviously an established leader, uh, but in his particular role, uh, it was a brick and mortar institution, and he's looking to how do we embrace this idea of online learning, digital learning, and what does it mean to my institution? He was terrific. Um, so, so the 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 other part uh, that we've referenced a couple times is we really have a nice mix of institution and organizational. And the other dimension I would probably add on to that is we also have individuals uh, who are from. Not a lot, but we've had people who are from service, the service industries. So they may be companies that, that provide services to the online learning industry. Now, I will tell you I'm very selective, uh, and, and David Soleil, I'll get to that in a minute. We're very selective with that. We are careful about how they're positioned and what they bring to the table. We, we will not uh, fill the room up with uh, salespeople uh, pushing products and such. The, the people we've had in have been so um, terrific about um, wanting to learn about the online learning, about the, the, the pressures that we feel and the challenges we feel. And, and likewise, our participants have been really uh, grateful to have another lens there from a service provider. Um, and lastly, then, we really do try to reach out and get a mix geographically, uh, including international participants. Uh, I think I have a slide coming up here. Um, uh, from the from the various types of individuals, um, and I think we've had 16 countries now represented. And, and I got to tell you, this year I've been seeing great uh, interest from uh, from a variety. The reason that that becomes so important for us is as leaders. Uh, I mentioned earlier the idea of understanding that larger framework of where you fit, not just in your state or in or in in our in the U.S., but also at a global perspective. And um, just has we just have developed a wonderful cadre of international colleagues who are uh, as dedicated, perhaps in a different setting. Uh, UK schools, for example, or European schools may have a different funding mechanism and so forth. But it's important for us to understand and embrace that. Uh, and many times there are opportunities to uh, to collaborate around different kind of projects, which opens our our mindset. Um, I'm going to do the selection process and then hand it over to Karen next. So uh, we are currently open the, uh, for applications. The process does include uh, the requirement for a letter of support from your institutional leader. And I'll, I'll tell you why that's important. One of the things that we, we can do through this program is to elevate your profile within your institution. So instead of you simply sending in an application and us reviewing it, by you needing to reach out to an institutional leader, a, a, a senior director, a, a whatever, whatever the next or two levels up uh, uh, individual to support you, what that does is it says to them two things. One is that you are interested in stepping into a leadership role, but also you're interested in addressing institutional needs and needs that can be addressed through digital and online learning. And so it, it, it raises that visibility. We do an exercise very early on in the program where we have you interact with senior leadership at your institution to understand what the pressures and the challenges. So as you move into project phase, you already have some orientation to what the institution may need. We also ask that you have the funding identified and secured. We'll get to the cost of the program, but let's just say this is going to be a significant investment of resources from your institution. 
again, going to senior leadership, expressing your interest to step forward and provide that leadership, but also requesting and needing you know, this, this investment of dollars says that the institution is, is um, uh, putting investment. They see the value in this program. They see the value in, in you coming forward. Uh, we have uh, the two co-directors, David Soleil and I, uh, do the review. We engage our faculty members, uh, and then we come up with the best uh, qualified applicants. And it's based on, I have to tell you, it is based on a variety of issues. It is based on geography. It's based on uh, your readiness to move. There are times where we've come back to individuals and said, you know, if from where you're positioned right now in your institution, it may do you better to wait a year or two. Um, we, we do that with full respect that people are putting good dollars on the table and it's an investment and we want them to be able to maximize that investment. Too early on in the career where you really don't have that background to draw on, you may not be quite ready to step into that role. And so we try to do a little career advising. Many times we have individuals who apply one year uh, and for whatever reason may not be able to participate that year and then reapply. That, that's happened quite often. And I'm often engaged in conversations with those individuals as well to help through that process. Uh, I, we aim for 50. Uh, it's not unusual for us to take 52 or 53, depending on what the demand is for that year. So we're a little flexible around those numbers. But we found the 50 number to be a sweet spot for um, just enough people to sort of get diversity and broader engagement, but not so many to be overwhelmed. Um, Tony, I don't know if you've, how you feel about that, because I, I think your group probably had about 52 in it. Would you feel that the, that, that time, that those numbers were about right for you? You know, over the, the four days that we were on campus, uh, I felt like I uh, connected with almost everybody in our group. Uh, it didn't seem, uh, like it was too large a group and it was certainly uh, you do a lot of interacting with peers and a lot of group work and so uh, the I think the the 50 is a good number absolutely yeah, yeah. okay good thank you thank you um, just another thought that letter from the uh, your institutional leader turns out to be a pretty important part of that application and um, it doesn't have to be long as a matter of fact I think we have a, a word limit on it because we don't want to read pages and pages, but getting them to state uh, what their interest is in supporting you as a participant is really helpful for us. And uh, there have been times where that's been a make or break. Uh, if it's a sort of a lukewarm, doesn't the individual may not really understand what the program is about, uh, that may work not for you. Uh, where the in institutional leader has really embraced it and supported you. And again, think about how that serves multiple purposes. It certainly serves uh, the individual in going back after the program and coming back to that institutional leader and saying, hey, let me tell you about what I experienced and, and let's work on identifying a project together that I can help advance. So, so there's a lot of synergy that happens there. So Karen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, I'll, I'll just do the introductions here myself and David Soleil from Washington State will serve as your co-directors. Uh, and then we've got a number of colleagues. So I'm going to leave it to Karen here because I know you know everybody on this list. Good morning. And uh, Larry, before we move on, uh, Deborah asked a question in the chat box. And she wanted to know, um, there's an ILOL alum that's recommended that she apply and is interested in writing a letter of support. How many additional letters of support from colleagues will I need? Um, and she's looking at applying in 2018. OK, super. Um, so that so unless the process changes, if at the beginning of the program I mentioned that we will be uh, Penn State and OLC will be this will be the last year of IELOL. Next year it'll move perhaps to a different model, and and we don't yet know what that'll look like. But let let me base it on this year, presuming it'll be close, Karen. If that's okay with you, um, I, I we we're really looking for one one strong letter of support. Uh, you raised the question there about an IELOL alum. They are um, uh, when you get that when you get a support from an IELOL alum, we call that a legacy uh, application, which means it's based on 
somebody who knows you and knows the program is suggesting it's a good match, it's like it, it carries its weight in gold. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, so I would go if if um, uh, Tony's going to give me an application or, or a, uh, a recommendation from somebody in his organization, I'm going to go with Tony's recommendation because he knows the program. I know Tony. It, it's it's sort of a it, I won't say it's a done deal, but it, it, it carries an awful lot of weight. So that's how I would use it. Um, we we don't have we don't tend to have a lot of multiple other uh, letters. You're certainly welcome to do that, but uh, it's really not necessary. I would say pick pick uh, if you've got an alum who you know who would write that for you. That would be super. Uh, if you have a, a senior leader, um, like I said, uh, perhaps a level above you, someone you report to, that that's going to be quite fine. Don't don't fret over that too much. I don't mean to overstress that, but just to say, be a little bit thoughtful about that as well. Karen, does that help? Yep, great. And Deborah, if you have a follow-up question, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I wanted to just briefly talk about the faculty. And as you can see here on the slide, the 2017 faculty are um, identified. And I think as Larry talked about the ILOL uh, participants, the faculty also represents um, different types of institutions, different sizes of institutions, um, international, uh, US-based. Um, both Lori and I have significant experience in online learning prior to our roles with OLC. Um, so the faculty mix is also very deliberate um, in terms of the experience that we bring to the table, the institutions where we have served, um, and what that will mean for the experience for each of you. Uh, so the faculty, uh, it's great to have a great group of faculty uh, to work with. And we all take uh, a lead in different areas of the program, uh, which brings that diversity of, of perspectives and voices uh, to the conversation. Karen, if I could um, um, just interrupt yeah. very quickly. I just want to make a point. We have two alums now on the faculty. So uh, Liz uh, Chibochi and uh, Andrew Sheen. Uh, are both ILOL uh, graduates, and and um, I, I know that that is going to be a trend that will continue in the future because we've got great people who have really, uh, and, and it's not necessarily that they've advanced in their career. And in, in, in this case, that has both happened to Liz and, and to Andrew. But but uh, we have had a lot of interest from our alumni who said, if you could find a place for me, if you have a need for me, I'd love to be able to participate in the program. And they bring. You know, they bring the history of their own experience, but also that sort of that larger vision of uh, where they're going in their career. Great. Thanks, Larry. And I don't know who's driving the slides. I, I can advance it. How about that? Oh. Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, so I want to talk just briefly about the program, because uh, we have sort of referenced it. Uh, but this slide really focuses on the four different aspects of the program. And it's a multimodal program. Um, so you'll see um, each year we have a primer. Uh, which is an online component, that really allows us to get to know one another um, and do a little work before we come together for the immersion experience. Um, but that primer really is where we find out the, the personal side of, of those that are participating, um, those of us that are dog lovers. Uh, we get to know one another, uh, but also that professional side. So we get to know um, each other before we come together. And I think that's important, uh, because each of us finds ourselves in unique situations. And sometimes it's helpful for someone to know that I was at a college that um, was uh, founded in 1885. And in 2000, I was the first female vice president at that institution. Um, so for many years, that institution did not have a female uh, in a senior leadership role. And so what does that mean? 
Uh, and that's also the same institution where I telecommuted for eight years. And how do you telecommute as a vice president of an institution? But it's those kinds of insights and perspectives that we can all share uh, with each other through that primer. The immersion experience is when we come together face to face and we will be at State College again this year. Um, the dates are August 7th through the 10th. So this is really incredibly important that you look at your schedule and the, these dates will work for you because this is the core of the program. And so, um, you know, I would say to you if, if, if your family vacation is going to push into those dates and it's already booked and already scheduled, you may want to look at 2018 mm -hmm. um, for your application because it's really important that you're there. And I, and I think Tony has talked to that in terms of that immersion experience and the value when you come together as a group. Karen, before you move on, on that, can I just, um, I just want to make a comment, and uh, we did this last year, and I'm going to uh, assume that, well, I shouldn't say assume, I'm going to plan on doing it again this year. We, we added another part to the immersion experience that is a, um, a workshop the day after, so it would be, in this case, Friday, August 11th. Last year we did a program, uh, for those individuals, you're already traveling and um, you may already have to stay over that Thursday night. We did a program last year called Innovations in Faculty Development, which was a free workshop. Uh, we sponsored it, my, my center here, uh, COIL sponsored it, and we had 15 of the IELOL individuals who stayed over that extra night to participate in that workshop. It's not a part of IELOL, it's kind of an add-on, but uh, it was such a hit last year. I think we had 35 or so individuals in the, in the workshop. We're going to pick a topic. I'm not sure what it's going to be this year, but we'll do something else again. It's kind of another, another a bonus, I think, if you will. Um, so think, think about that as well. That way, uh, if you do have to stay over Friday, you, you may, maybe you use that eight till noon time as uh, as another workshop, and then and then head home on Friday afternoon. So I just wanted to put a plug in for that. Perfect. Thanks, Larry. Um, the other aspect of the program is that we. Um, as you go through the immersion experience, uh, you begin to identify a project for your institution, um, something where you will take a leadership role. Um, and it can take a lot of different forms. Um, and it's not that the project has to be completed between September 18th and October 6th uh, because that is a relatively short amount of time and we recognize that. But this is really for you to plan, to think about, to strategize with others. Um, the faculty are there uh, to serve as mentors for that, that particular portion. Um, so you have that ability to think about I've gone through this experience, now what am I going to do at my institution and how do I showcase my leadership um, at my institution? And so that, that project is critical. Once again, that's an online uh, component. We finalize um, with the master workshop. Uh, it, it is in conjunction with the OLC Accelerate Conference in the fall, which is in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the master's workshop, uh, those that can attend, participate. The great thing about the master's workshop is that alumni also uh, participate in this experience. And so it's a great time to not only connect with those that are part of your ILOL uh, class, but also then to, to begin that connection with some alumni in the field. Um, so those are really the four components of the experience. Um, and the, the dates and kind of timelines so you can get a sense of how that might look for your schedule for this year. Karen, can I um, just comment on two, two parts of this? Uh, yeah. A date we should probably have on this as well is the application deadline uh, for this year's program, which is April 14th. So uh, make a note of that. And um, I might just comment on that master's workshop. We call it the uh, IELOL, IELOL master's class. Um, we understand in particular, well, maybe it applies to everybody, but traveling, you know, getting the funds to come to State College and participate in the immersion and then getting the funds to come to the master's work class can be a lot and sometimes it's a, it's a stress. 
for, for an institution uh, for the funding of that. However, um, I cannot um, underestimate or, or under comment on the value of that master's class. This year, as a matter of fact, the alumni are going to take that program over. They're going to, they're going to run the workshop. Uh, something that we do in that workshop is we open it up not just to the current class, the 2017 class, but we invite alums to come back in. And so you get an opportunity, and we typically get 60 to 80 people in that room, and so you really get an opportunity to see who else has been in the program. You're then going to, to go to the conference, and so it's a, it's a real added value. And I would, I would suggest as you're considering an application, consider the funding that you'll re be required to do that one as well. We do pay for your pre-conference workshop, so the 2017 class has a, has a um, that's prepaid for. We'll, we, we take that out of your tuition for the program. Alums do pay an extra fee to participate, but the, the other conference, going to the OLC Accelerate Conference is a separate fee. You would need uh, you need the funding to participate in that, and plus lodging and travel and so forth. So, so think about that whole package. That is the entirety of the program. And I think to get the most out of this, and I know Tony, you've been at the master's class. Um, I, I think to get the feeling of the IELOL experience, we'd really encourage you to consider doing doing the entire piece of the program. Okay, Karen, I'm going to move have... you on. Yeah, sure. It's a great point, Larry. And the, uh, what I was going to say, too, is just that we recognize that um, sometimes attending a conference, um, that institutions that you need to be presenter at that conference. So also remember that the request for proposals for the OLC conference uh, will be out shortly. And you may want to consider submitting a proposal for presentation at that conference. Once again, um, it adds to your vita it, and it showcases um, your work in terms of uh, conference presentation. So I would encourage you to do that as well because that's a great way to um, really showcase uh, your institution and that may help with that funding uh, to come to the master class in the conference. So uh, Lorraine asked a question there. The Orlando portion seems to be a worthy finale, yes? Um, I, I'd say absolutely. I, I've gone to the, almost every single one. I think there have been 21 of them now, Karen. Um, I've made it to almost every single one of the OLC conferences. Uh, prior to this, it was called Sloan C. Um, what I find so effective and so powerful about that conference is the mix of faculty perspective, learning design perspective, research, administration, leadership. Uh, there's something in there. Believe me, that the challenge will be uh, making the decisions of which ones to go to and which ones not to go to, just because there's so much. Uh, Tony, you're nodding as well. I'm guessing that's been your experience as well. Can I uh, um, add a, just a brief comment about the, the entire experience? Certainly, uh, the Orlando the, the conference is a worthy finale, but the whole process, it is, it is foundational, the primer, and I apologize for not interjecting sooner, but the primer is such an important part of this process. As Karen was referencing, gives you an opportunity to connect with, with folks and faculty before you get there. It actually, uh, the primer helps set the stage uh, for you to just really jump into the immersion experience. Uh, generally, when you go to you know, conferences and institutes like this, you know, that first day you're just trying to get to know people and, and connect and find some, some things, some shared interests. The primer really takes that piece away from the, the actual immersion experience and that's what I really appreciated about the primer is that certainly it gets you, you know, you're thinking about issues in digital learning, but it also helps you connect with folks. It helps put you in a kind of a mindset that when once you get to campus that you hit the ground running. So it's there. I would say that for the four days, uh, it there is you know every every second counts. You're you're really learning and engaged the entire time, which is what I really appreciated about the experience. Yeah, it, and Tony, just to add on to that, um, the the project is so so. We want to make, you know, kind of give equal, equal yeah. weight here. Yes. What, what individuals have said about the project is 
it's an opportunity to take what they've learned from the program. And think about this. Now you have, oh, what do we have, seven faculty members. You've got 51 other colleagues. And my point always to the group is, look, this is like free consulting. Pick a yep. project that means something to you that you want to advance in your institution. Work with your senior leadership to carve that out. Then you bring that to the table and you get tremendous input. You've got colleagues like Karen Peterson who have been, who, who've been in a variety of roles uh, who, who will help you and guide you through how to advance that project. Uh, it, it, and, and Karen mentioned we don't expect the project to be done within the three-week period, obviously. But what we're hoping to do is to frame it for you so that it's going to be successful. And that framing is, is, in my mind, that planning is just incredibly powerful. I, every year, every year at the conference, at the OLC conference, it happens where I have individuals come up to me and say, Larry, do you remember my IELOL project where I was going to start a new center for this or that? And of course, I don't really remember because there's been quite a few of them. But they'll say, you know, I just, we got it launched this year. It was three years ago we started the conversation and we just got it launched, but it wouldn't have started. It wouldn't, I'm sorry, it wouldn't have launched if they hadn't started back in the IELOL. So, so I think taking advantage, Tony, to your point about the whole system sort of is just a really powerful, and, yeah. And can I add just a, a brief comment about the project is, um, and what Larry's saying is absolutely accurate as, as a um, participant in the Institute. Uh, I've been working on my project now going uh, on almost two years mm -hmm. and that we've actually uh, have really gotten institutional support, funding, uh, looking at different modalities. In fact, I'm looking at the participant list. Uh, one, uh, Laura, I think is, uh, Slowinski is here, is helping me with uh, the, it's a graduate orientation project and so uh, certainly uh, there are institutional benefits that come from uh, IELOL that really can impact your institution. So, mm. For, ter terrific, Tony. Thank you. Um, it, it, you're, the, the whole thing, and I and I forget who made the comment a couple minutes ago, Lorraine, about the psychology behind the building and the setup of the experience. The whole experience is designed to be strategic, from the from the primer getting you oriented to your institutional issues, getting you oriented to your leadership, coming to the emerging, engaging with everything is designed to be very strategic. Uh, we're not interested in doing exercises for the sake of exercises. It's, it's, um, you know, it's a really engaged experience. A couple questions are coming up, if I can just maybe quickly, before I turn it back yep. over to uh, Karen. Uh, will you be required uh, to travel? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, in particular, and, and I won't say exclusively because you, you heard me say about my, my desire, my belief of getting to the OLC conference is important, but it's not, if you have circumstances where you can't make a repeat treat, uh, trip um, uh, for some reason to Orlando, then, but the immersion, the state college experience is, is sort of the crux of the program. It's the, it's the main part. So yes, travel is required for that. Uh, there's not currently in our model, there is not an online, it's not an on, strictly an online program. Karen referenced it as a blended or mixed modality. That's kind of where we are. Uh, another question came up, can you give me some information about the workload uh, participants have to take during the primer? Yes, we're going to get to that in a couple minutes. Song answered, is there a list of alums in the projects? Um, we do have a list of alums, of course. I don't necessarily think I have a list of their projects. And um, so I'll, I'll be honest here. Not every single faculty member has embraced the project uh, aspect. And um, it, it is a, I, I, I stress it, uh, I encourage it, but you know, people get back to their real lives and um, and sometimes they're not able to, to move their project forward. Or they start on a project, but they don't reflect back to the IELOL experience. And they'll tell me later on, oh, yes, I had a project the whole time. I just didn't complete my assignment. Uh, one of those individuals happens to be my supervisor here at, at Penn State, uh, Renata Engel, who participated in the program. It was a little interesting. My, my boss was sitting in the audience as I'm co-directing the program. 
and afterwards she, sim she simply did not have the time to do a defined project, but she still apologizes to me to this day that she didn't do her homework. Uh, and, I, and my comment is always, Renata, you probably have enough projects on your list. So um, I'm going to also get to the, uh, to the financial support. Ebony asked a question there. So I'll tell you about some scholarships we have available in a couple minutes. But um, Karen, do you want, is there anything on this slide you need to speak to or want to? I think we've really covered this, Larry. I think the, as we've talked, the, um, the participants come from a range of institutional types, um, large, small, um, for-profit, non-profit, publics, privates, religious affiliated, HBCUs, um, Hispanic uh, serving institutions, you name it. Um, and so I think that's uh, important. And then, as Larry mentioned, we have had representation um, from many countries. Terrific. Um, and I'm going to kind of move through this next one because I, I see some questions popping up that are pretty important. Uh, as, as I have stated, I don't want to overstate the idea of the global reach. Uh, we do work, the IELOL team works with other conferences that, uh, so we've reached out, we've done programs at the European Distance Education Network, ASLITE, which is in Australia, ALT, which is in the UK, and so forth. So we're very big on driving that larger perspective. And uh, we, we just absolutely love and, and uh, treasure our international participation because they bring so much to the table. Um, we mentioned the, uh, the network a little bit. Uh, this is uh, our primary method right now is a Facebook group. Uh, by the way, anyone, you don't have to be an alum, anyone is welcome to join the, uh, the Facebook group. You can type into Facebook IELOL and ask to join the page. It is a moderated site, um, and, but you're welcome to join that. We have over 500 people right now. I mentioned earlier we only have 327 uh, alumni, and I've got 500 people joining the Facebook group. Uh, you'll see job postings on there. You'll see questions about projects on there. And, and um, I hear so often how much our community appreciates that, uh, that resource to tap into. So, um, so consider joining that, as I said, whether or not. Um, there's a question earlier about financial support, so I'm hoping that that's one that's going to come up. Um, okay, maybe in a slide or two. And Karen, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in and, and um, walk, the, walk through these. So there always comes up the question about how much time will it take. And, and um, so it's one of those uh, experiences where you get out of it what you put into it. You can certainly do the minimum uh, work in IELOL and, and kind of skate through the program with a few posts and so forth. Uh, what we've learned is people who really put the time and effort into the primer, and as Tony mentioned earlier, the advantages of getting to know your colleagues, uh, beginning to do some of the homework about your institution prepares you. So when you step into the immersion experience, you're, you're primed. <laughs> It's kind of done its job. The immersion is a full day program. Uh, keep in mind there's some travel time around that. Um, I've already mentioned that one extra day uh, on Friday where we'll have a separate workshop that's not required. The immersion, uh, when you come to State College, by the way, that is the name of the town. I know it sounds a little odd, but State College is, is the name of our community. Um, yeah, you are, it's a full day program. I mean, there, there's really not time. You're not going to be doing, uh, you know, a, a swim at the pole and touring the town and the community. It's pretty immersive. It's pretty, it, and again, that is our respecting your time and your investment to be here. Um, the project portion, uh, again, this is about you framing a project. This is not you actually completing the project. This is really uh, probably a two to three hour week. And again, that is you providing some information, your colleagues providing a response back, and, and helping you to um, articulate a clear plan for how you want to advance your project. Finally, the workshop, as we mentioned, is a full day pre-conference workshop. It's always on the Tuesday prior to the start of the OLC Accelerate conference. So let's talk about cost a little bit. Um, let me jump down to the blue portion first. Uh, you are responsible, of course, for all of your travel, meals in travel, and lodging. We will help you do that, but you need to be aware that uh, those are cost on top of the tuition. Um, 
excuse me, the tuition is, is $27.95. That number has really not changed, uh, virtually has not changed over the period of time we've been offering the program. We've tried to keep it uh, at that amount. It does include, of course, all of the programming activities, includes once the program begins, we have um, uh, breakfast, receptions, lunches, uh, dinners, and so forth. So there's very little during the program. I think there's a Tuesday evening when you have dinner on your own. Everything else is part of the program. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do provide registration for the OLC master's class. That's the pre-conference session. Uh, I think that fee is about $300. That comes out of your tuition. We also provide a one-year individual membership to the OLC organization. Uh, so that's the that's kind of the benefits of of uh, participating in the um, or providing those those fees. Now uh, to that point, I, I realize that that the fees are high uh, for for lots of individuals. There's travel. This is a significant investment of time and, and resources. And um, so we do have two scholarships that we make available: uh, Bruce Shalou and Gary Miller. Uh, Bruce uh, passed away in 2013. He uh, Prior was the um, co-director with me on the program, very uh, close uh, personal friend, uh, as well as Gary Miller, who uh, is with us here in State College, uh, is, was my mentor for many years and still is, and a, and a good personal friend. Both, both um, Bruce's uh, scholarship in his individuals traveling internationally because Bruce felt this was really an important part of our program. And we're trying something a little bit different this year, and that is we're trying to make funds available, uh, smaller amounts of money to more people. In the past, we've funded one tuition scholarship for one person. This year, we've decided to sort of break that apart a little bit. We've not exactly settled on uh, the amounts and how we'll, how we'll sort those through. But when you do the application, uh, you will let us know that you're interested in a scholarship, and uh, we'll ask you to provide some information. Um, the, I'm going to tell you right now the amounts of that, because we are trying to spread it out, will be between $500 and $1,000. And that will be a tuition support. So we will reduce the, t the cost of your tuition fees to participate. Gary's uh, scholarship, because Gary is, uh, is an uh, advocate of providing funds and supporting individuals from institutions who may not have the resources to participate, uh, and those can be a wide range of types of institutions, uh, those tend to be more national-based, primarily U.S., but I wouldn't say restricted to that. So um, post, uh, when you fill out your application, let us know that you're looking for, you're interested. If if the, part, if the scholarship is a make or break for you, in other words, you won't be able to participate if you don't have some amount of scholarship, please let us know that as well. Um, we, what we're trying to do here is to keep these scholarships oriented to individuals who have really expressed that need uh, because that was the intent of the program. I know lots of us would like to have a tuition discount on, on lots of things, but we're trying to keep this one to enable people who may have not been able to participate otherwise to use these uh, two scholarships. Uh, another question that has come up, and I want to make sure I address, I address this, is um, the idea of uh, teams and individuals. So last year, this is our class, by the way, from last year uh, in beautiful State College at, at our conference center. And um, last year, we, we tried a new approach. We opened up the applications for uh, what we called a team uh, to participate. And we had three. Karen, I'm going to ask you in a second to maybe respond to this team idea, uh, because I know you were active with these teams. We had three institutions who sent four individuals. Well, three or four. I can't remember the exact numbers. Four institutions. They came as a team because they were looking to jumpstart or to advance their, their project at their home institution. And um, what we did was through the program, we found times where we could put a faculty member like Karen with one of those teams where they can concentrate and advance their particular project. Now, we, we're also sensitive to trying to open it up so that you're not just with your team. Uh, as Tony mentioned earlier, part of the advantage of the program is that you get a nice mix of network and all. So I'd say consider the team is if you have um, 
you know, a particular institutional project that requires consideration or perspective from various lens. So for example, our colleagues, uh, one institution of uh, Boston College last year brought a fin their financial officer, they brought a, a chief academic officer, they brought a faculty member, and they brought a support team member. I, as a matter of fact, I think it was a marketing person. So they, they came as a group and they sort of behaved as a group. So, um, so consider that as an option. I, uh, again, it's a, it seems to be a pretty powerful uh, opportunity for some. Um, so with that, let me, let me give you some wrap-up information. I see folks are kind of signing, signing off. Uh, thank you for those of you who I know some of you may have to slip off here. Um, here's the information I want to leave with you, the uh, April 14th uh, application deadline. Um, you can find more information at both coil.psu.edu, I-E-L-O-L. As I mentioned, COIL is the Center for Online Innovation at Learning here at Penn State. Also, if you Google OLC space I-E-L-O-L, you'll also come up to the OLC representation of, uh, of the program as well. And if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to respond to those. Uh, I am LCR in the number one at PSU.edu. So before I sign off, uh, we have a couple minutes yet. Karen, can I ask you to give any wrap-up thoughts? And then, Tony, I'm going to come to you as well. No, I just uh, am really grateful that everyone joined us this morning. Um, as Larry stated, uh, any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're here to support your leadership endeavors and uh, your progress uh, forward at your institution and beyond. Good. Thanks, Karen. Tony, any uh, final thoughts? Yeah, I just uh, want to encourage everybody to, uh, uh, if you're interested, to really uh, to move forward with your application. Uh, the experience is, is a game changer as far as leadership and networking. Uh, you'll be experience, uh, experiencing uh, the perspectives from great faculty from all over the country and different institutions. And uh, it is a worthy investment. And I'm certainly glad I made the investment, my institution made the investment. And I know that we have individuals from our institution that, uh, that uh, have gone every year for the last four or five years. So it is certainly worthwhile. Terrific. So let me, let me say thank you to all of you who joined us today. And uh, special thanks, of course, to my colleagues, Karen and Tony, uh, for carving out time. Tony, very early on the West Coast, uh, carving out time to be with us. And we'll look forward to seeing applications. Uh, let us know if there's anything else that we can help uh, address any questions for you. So with that, I'll sign off and say uh, best wishes to you all. Thank you.